In this video, we're doing a short rotational kinematics problem. So we're told we have a motor that accelerates from rest to 2000 RPMs, in other words, rotations per minute, over the course of 0.5 seconds. And we're told in the problem that we can assume the rate of acceleration is close to constant. Now, the reason that's important is that it allows us to use our standard kinematics equations that are valid when the angular acceleration is a constant. So in part A, we want to compute the angular acceleration of this motor in radians per second squared. And this requires some prep work. We need to get that final velocity of the motor in radians per second instead of rotations per minute. So we start with the unit analysis. We have 2000 rotations per minute, and we'll work on the angle first. For every one rotation, we have two pi radians. Then we work on the minutes. For every minute, there are 60 seconds. So we multiply the numerators together and divide by 60 and we obtain a final angular velocity of 209.4 radians per second, just keeping a little extra precision than usual since we're just at the beginning of the calculation. Now I want that angular acceleration. And because the angular acceleration is constant, I can just say the angular acceleration is given by what was the change in angular velocity, delta omega, divided by the change in time, delta t. So my change in angular velocity, I started at zero and ended at 209.4 radians per second. So my change is 209.4. My change in time, half of a second or 0.5 seconds. Note that the units come out to radians per second squared here. And keeping three sig figs for our final answer, we get 419 radians per second squared. Now in part B, we're asked for the number of turns completed during the acceleration process. And our first constant acceleration angular kinematics equation will give us the angular displacement in radians, and then we'll have to convert into complete turns. So I'm writing down theta equals theta naught plus omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared. That's completely analogous to the constant acceleration kinematics formula that we're used to using. It's just for the angular sense. We don't lose anything by calling the initial angular position zero. And we know this motor started at rest, so the second term is zero as well. And we'll get a final angle out of this, and that's just the angular displacement during the process relative to our starting point of zero. So for our final angle, we get one half alpha t squared. And when I plug in alpha, and I'll keep the units on this just to illustrate how it works, I get radians per second squared, 419 radians per second squared. And then I multiply by t squared, 0.5 seconds, all squared. So the squared seconds are going to cancel out, leaving me with radians. And when I run the numbers on this, I get 52.4 radians for the angular displacement during this acceleration process. So finally, we have to go back and do unit analysis again. I have 52.4 radians, and then multiply by the conversion factor, 2 pi radians in the denominator there. So those cancel for every one rotation or turn, as I said in the problem. And dividing 52.4 by 2 pi, I get 8.34 rotations, or you could call them turns, and we're done. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.